Animals live in a constantly changing environment. So in order to survive, they need to be able to respond appropriately to threats or dangerous situations. So this means they need to be able to detect threats. And once they've detected a threat, they need to become more ready to run away from danger. And also their senses need to become more alert in order to detect further threats. So to do this, the nervous system enters a state called arousal, during which the motor circuits, and at least some sensory circuits, become primed or sensitized. An important question then is, how does the brain control such a complex behavioral state and make sure that the right neurons become sensitized? Previous research indicates that signaling molecules called neuropeptides are important for this process in lots of animals. Neuropeptides are small protein molecules that generally signal through receptors called G-protein coupled receptors on the surface of a receiving neuron. This causes the neuron to change its neural activity to become more or less active. Our study asked which neuropeptides are released when an animal um, responds to a threatening mechanical or touch stimulus and how is the signal then communicated to the rest of the nervous system to enter the state of behavioral arousal and to sensitize the correct neurons to allow the animal to escape from the dangerous situation. To answer these questions, we used a model organism called C. elegans, a microscopic nematode worm. The worm is an excellent scientific model animal because we know its entire genetic sequence, meaning that we can um, identify which genes encode, for example, neuropeptides. Also, it has a relatively compact nervous system of only 302 neurons, um, which are identical between all animals. Importantly, we have a pretty good idea about how all of these neurons connect to each other via synapses that act as physical connections that allow communication between these cells. This connectome or map of the nervous system is really useful because it allows us to hypothesize which neurons drive different behaviors depending on the nature of these connections. To find the neuropeptides that are required for behavioral arousal in response to touch, we tested many genetic mutants and found that most of them behave normally, but one, lacking the neuropeptide FLIP20, failed to show sensitization in response to touch. This was very exciting, but to get the whole picture, we need to know what receptors can be activated by FLIP20 peptides. To do this, we made cells express many different receptors, and we asked which receptors were able to cause cellular activation in the presence of FLIP20 peptides. We found that only one receptor gave this effect, and this was called FRPR3. We used genetic rescue to identify where in the nervous system the FRPR3 receptor was functioning and identified a single neuron in the central brain called RID. Now when the worm is poked and FLIP20 peptides are released, this activates RID. So RID is unusual in that it seems to communicate only using neuropeptides. So we believe that when RID is activated by FLIP20, that it in turn releases more neuropeptides, which in turn sensitize aversive taste and enhance locomotion. Why is this interesting? Well, we know that neuropeptide signaling often occurs between neurons that are not wired together with synapses. So it's important to understand how networks of neuropeptide signaling in the brain are organized. So one possibility is that there's just a collection of independent interactions where certain cells release peptides in response to a stimulus and another set of cells respond to that stimulus because they have the right receptors. Another possibility is that the neuropeptide network has a central organization with some neuropeptides acting as afferents or input signals that control central nodes in the brain. And these central nodes could then release efferent peptides which then modulate target tissues in the periphery. So it's this second type of organization that seems to be true for the arousal circuit in C. elegans. Now in future work, we'd like to understand more about the organization of neuropeptide signaling networks in C. elegans, and hopefully we can apply this knowledge to understand how neuromodulatory circuits are organized in bigger brains, including humans.